Hello everyone, today we're talking about chapter 8, Building Flavor and Balanced Baking. Great job everybody on your homework submissions. I can definitely see you're utilizing the information that's provided in this lecture and in the textbook. So great job, I'm really excited to be seeing you really applying the nutrition information and this information is universal and will go with you even after this class. So great job and keep up the hard work. We've got 54 slides to cover today, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on every single slide. I'm going to give you the gist of uh, what you need to know. So our learning objectives really, again, it's going back to building flavor. So this, um, let's start here. This is really good. Be sure to get familiar with the slide to know everything on the slide. So you want to know the difference between seasoning, flavoring, and um, what a flavor pro profile is and then how to build flavor. So throughout the slides, we're going to be going um, through some of these. And some of this will be review for you as well. If any of you have taken saucier, aromatics, have um, taken your first cooking class, a lot of this should feel very familiar and be more of a refresher. It's still nutrition, but it's more on the cooking side, which I'm sorry that we're not together or in a test kitchen together, which would have been way awesome, um, way more fun <laughs> than listening to a lecture, but we're making do. So seasoning, substances used to bring out a flavor that is already present versus flavoring substances used to add a new flavor or modify the original flavor. So seasoning bring out flavors that are already present versus flavored to kind of change or modify the flavor of the product that you started with and alter it. So how you can do this is you can utilize a flavor profile. Um, what that means is it's a harmony of flavors and aromas that make up the total taste of the dish so this is really up for interpretation and improvising and as you get really familiar uh, with different cooking methods and different ingredients you'll be able to build multiple different flavor profiles as I'm sure most many of you when you go to different restaurants you might go from one Thai food to another Thai food restaurant and you can see or you can taste that the the flavors are different so I definitely noticed that and I noticed that flavors are very different from when you build them yourself versus buying something that's prepackaged, like a prepackaged seasoning packet or a prepackaged um, like Thai food uh, or Thai red curry paste, as opposed to building it yourself. You can taste there's different flavor profiles. So to build a pro uh, flavor profile in this chapter, at least we discuss um, the ingredients, your preparation techniques and cooking methods. So we differentiate between herbs and spices. Herbs are the leafy parts of certain plants that grow in temperate climates versus spices are roots, bark, seeds, flowers, buds, and fruits of certain tropical plants, mostly available dried. So there definitely is a difference. Fresh herbs can only withstand about 30 minutes of cooking, so they work best for finishing dishes, tossing, in before serving or in any other accompaniments such as fresh salsa so with this you'll be able this is something that i feel is also trial by error like you have to really utilize these herbs and really taste what they are how they taste fresh versus how they taste after they're cooked um and really play around with that and dried herbs work well in longer cooking applications such as stock stews braising marinating dry rubs and sauces dry herbs are much more potent than fresh so for some people they may want a stronger flavor or seasoning and so they might want to use dried herbs instead so this is a cool slide that the textbook provides different combinations of herbs to um, impart certain flavors so mediterranean and italian would be basil oregano red red onion olives and thyme so these are just suggestions if you're going for more of a certain type of flavor or seasoning um, from these different regions. So I'll let you go through those. I think it's really interesting. Um, I haven't tried all of the combinations, but I've tried most and I think they're great. <laughs> so definitely recommend when you, when you get a free chance to try those out. And what a great way, like if you're someone who's um, starting to eat healthier, um, sometimes eating healthy can be really simple and bland and so I think um, incorporating these types of herbs in your cooking really make the dish more flavorful. 
Oh yeah, here's that word again, phytochemicals. Why would herbs and spices contain phytochemicals? And you probably already know the answer and it's right there on the slide. These are compounds produced by plants that promote health. Um, so pretty much any plant, any, almost any and every plant that's edible, like we can eat it, um, has phytochemicals. So all the more reason to use herbs and spices. And as I've said in the past, they are uh, protective against cancer and can be helpful for your heart or nervous system. So in the next few slides, I'm not going to go in depth on because this is really just um, hopefully a review. And if you haven't worked with some of these herbs and spices yet, um, like for this, this is an herb, basil, um, I highly recommend you uh, trying to utilize them. And some of my slides give um, suggestions for when to use uh, different herbs. So for example, this one it says basil, utilizing with like eggplant, um, as, of course you can make pesto from it, you can incorporate it into certain dishes, um, and then this next slide has um, variations of basil that you may have tried in different um, dishes or at different restaurants and you'll know uh, if you have tried them they have a much different flavor or taste than the, the, this basil. So they are different varieties. Oregano, so as I said, I'm just gonna go through. Tarragon, rosemary, so these are great to utilize fresh if you can. Dill, mint, also different variations of mint. And now we get into the spices. So we don't have it, um, I don't have it laid out here, but as you see on here, there's different anise, um, cinnamon, uh, looks like black peppercorn, lots of different on there. And you can utilize these sweet or aromatic spices in baking, um, cooking, sauces, stews, really it's endless. So kind of what was over here, some of them are shown, but here's a nice long list of spices um, that you can utilize. I, I ask, you know, if you do toast spices, how do you toast spices and why might you toast spices? So I normally ask that, but it does impart different flavor and sometimes more pungent flavor if you do toast ahead of time. But say you're utilizing the spices in a stew and maybe you put them into cheesecloth and have that in your stew then you wouldn't necessarily need to toast those ahead of time so it really depends on um, what your what flavor you're going for and here it just has a little tip on toasting place it in a saute pan medium to high heat for about one minute add spices to the dry pan toss quickly being careful not to burn until a nutty aroma is extracted from the spices so that's all toasting would entail There's different kinds of pepper, black, white, and green. I have never tried the green, um, but I have tried black and white, and in my opinion, white does have a different taste, um, but I only utilize white really when uh, I'm, have, I'm making sauces that are white and I don't want the color to change and have black specks in it, so. But, I'm, but they do taste different, so I'm sure for different recipes you'd utilize black over white over green. Uh, paprika so again we're just going through and I, you can go through these on your own I, you don't need me to read them to you curry powder which is interesting it's a blend of spices sometimes containing up to 15 different kinds so it's interesting um, here's global herb and spice blends so that might be something that you see in the store or something that you can make on your own a lot of this is just kind of like show and tell. I'm sorry that we didn't get to do this in person, but hopefully you get to do this when you return to your classes. So here are some pre-made herb and spice blends that you might also see in the store or that you can make. So one other way that I think it's cool that the book um, includes is that you can also um, infuse and flavor oils. So you can add um, ground or whole spices, fresh herbs, citrus rinds, chilies, juices, fresh root um, to oil or to vinegar and let it sit and the flavor will be imparted in either the oil or the vinegar. So I highly recommend this, super tasty, you make it on your own, 
cheap and it's better than in my opinion most salad dressings because a lot of salad dressings that I've seen in the supermarket are typically high in sugar fat or salt so this is a great alternative we're moving into different vinegars um, there's all kinds. Um, one of my favorite vinegars that I found at Trader Joe's, which I don't go there often. I have friends that go a lot. Um, I'm just kind of a generic person. I go to Vaughn's and Albertsons, um, whatever's nearby. But um, I have, I went on, I, I accompanied a friend to Trader Joe's and I happened to find a orange champagne vinegar. Oh my goodness. It was so, oh, it was it orange champagne vinegar. It was really good. And um, I ended up utilizing that for almost a whole year because it was just so good. I hadn't had um, a vinegar like that before because a lot of vinegars are typically sour unless you get something like balsamic. So like balsamic and that champagne vinegar I was talking about, I think are really great for salad dressings. For salad dressings, you can also use citrus fruits. So you can use the zest or the juices or you can reduce them and make it more pungent, um, flavorful uh, juice, if you will. Um, so there's that you can do reduce liquids so if any of you have tried um, a glaze what's what's a bummer is I'm gonna give you these slides so you can go you can it's not the same though it's kind of a little bit more work sorry but if we were in class I'd be showing you a lot of videos that are incorporating these because we don't always get to work in a test kitchen um, so that would have been more fun so you could see what like a for example, glazes if you haven't worked with that. Um, but feel free if you're curious about anything that we talk about in this lecture that maybe I didn't cover or you need more or you're interested and you like more information, please feel free to um, reach out to me and I can provide you some videos or, or look it up uh, yourself as well. Um, I always think cooking is kind of an endless learning game and is fun in that respect. Um, aromatic vegetables. Include onions, celery, carrots, shallots, fennel, garlic. You'll see the first three are your mirepoix, which are chopped onions, celery, and carrots. A great starter for pretty much any dish. Um, there's also sofrito. I've never made it myself. I've only ever um, bought it at the store or at a restaurant. Um, you can dry, roast, smoke, puree, and um, grill vegetables. So that's another way to impart flavors, especially like I was saying, if you're someone who's trying to eat healthier, these are great cooking methods and uh, ways of incorporating veggies um, that would be maybe more flavorful or, or would mask their taste or their color or different things if there's, so for example, my husband doesn't really like cauliflower, so when I make an Alfredo sauce, I will blend, I will, um, sorry, I will steam uh, or boil the cauliflower just until they're soft. And then I will throw them in a blender um, and add that to my Alfredo sauce. So my husband and I are still getting our vegetables just in another form. So this is a really great idea and opportunity to incorporate more vegetables in a unique way. These are different condiments that some of you might be familiar with. Um, I have all of these in my pantry because you never know what recipe calls for or just when you feel like building a different kind of flavor profile. So we talk about rubs and marinades. So rubs can be wet or dry. Um, you can utilize them for delicate items. Um, like something like flaky, when it says delicate, like a fish, you don't want to cook it too long. Um, you can also, if you're, like, depending on the, the cooking time. So for a delicate item, fish, it's, uh, it cooks faster than a large cut of meat. So you don't have to let the fish sit in the rub or, yeah, sit in the rub for too long. Um, for the flavor to impart on it versus a larger cut of meat you would need at least 24 hours. Marinade, um, you can also, this is typically wet um, and you can add really anything to the marinade here in this slide we talk about um, vinegar, citrus, yogurt, um, an acidic uh, ingredient can help break down tough meat um, but really you can really put anything in there so um, I already mentioned citrus, uh, mirepoix, fresh herbs, shallots, garlic, low sodium soy sauce, mustard, and toasted spices. You could, you could do anything. The marinade, it's really up to you, and there's a lot of great recipes online. 
So here's additional preparation techniques, and then I have, I think, a couple of slides that talk about each one. Again, if you're not familiar, you're not sure, um, this is where I would incorporate videos just so that way we were all on the same page. Um, we've talked about reduction, um, searing, sweating, pureeing, caramelizing, toasting, smoking, and deglazing are all additional preparation techniques you can utilize um, to impart flavor and build that flavor profile. Searing, um, you're getting it nice and uh, I love the flavor whenever I sear anything. Searing steak, searing duck, searing the, the skin on a fish, I mean it's just so yummy. <laughs> Deglazing a pan. So typically this is after you saute or roast vegetables and then you can add a liquid. So there's different cooking methods as you may or may not be familiar with, dry heat cooking methods versus moist heat cooking methods. So um, dry heat, um, so dry heat, it, it depends, right? I mean, almost all of us are gonna, dry heat, for example, maybe grilling, um, but most of us are, or broiling, um, but most of us are gonna use moist heat um, or a combination, I mean, moist yes um okay let me before i get ahead of myself let me continue on with the slides but um i'm a i love i mean maybe i guess that's cut combination but dry heat you're using little to no oil and so i love sauteing um so i just want to see see i wanted to see our book may not do as good of a job as your um your main uh, textbook for your cooking class would do but there is a difference between the dry heat and the moist heat moist it's in the title it's going to be utilizing it's like steaming boiling but i want to know too i would assume dry heat then must be not only roasting and grilling but must also include sauteing so we'll go in that order all right so sauteing hopefully y'all are practicing a good tip that i got um, for learning how to saute was in just regular pan, no heat applied, um, add some dried rice to it and just start flipping and to where the rice is flipping together and not going all over the place. So that's a really great way of practicing that skill. Um, but typically you only add a little bit of oil. Here it says you can do a non, uh, use a non-stick pan and or use um, a cooking spray. I typically just go for um, olive oil and then whatever pan I have available. Um, so this is a really great way to add flavor. I almost always saute um, my veggies or meat uh, depending on what I'm making. So here it talks about shallots, garlics, or other, sorry, shallots, garlic, or other seasonings. And then you can also deglaze the pan with stock or, uh, so chicken stock, beef stock, wine, or another liquid. And then reduce the sauce. And then as it's reduced, oh, I have such a good YouTube video. Someone reach out to me and I'll remember to post that onto canvas but it might be in this uh, presentation but we talk about how to make a jus um, so it might be on the slide that I talk about that okay so okay so dry saute then I typically don't utilize a dry saute that's completely up to you if you want to do that but um, no I will probably if I try to do a, a dry saute I'll probably burn whatever I'm cooking I always have a little bit of oil in there um, so blanching, um, this is typically done if you want a bright color for something like your vegetables, but you can utilize blanch uh, cooking method for other things. So you submerge the vegetables into boiling water until they reach your desired doneness, and then you shock them in a, a ice water bath. So you shock them so that they st it stops the cooking and then it retains the color. And then you can do this so... So what this slide is then saying is like you can do this say if you're working in a restaurant and you want to have those vegetables ready to go where all you have to do is then either yeah dry saute or saute with a little bit of oil um, then that might make prep time and cooking time faster for if you're working on the line for example at a restaurant um, but if you're at home I mean for me this is too much trouble but if you guys want to maybe you're doing a nice um, dinner for friends or family and you want to um, do that you most certainly can that's an option stir fry we can do a stir fry in a pan but the best is a wok uh, hashtag goals <laughs> i don't have one in my kitchen yet but i one day i feel that i will 
So you would uh, coat the cooking surface with a thin layer of oil, such as peanut oil. Um, you can then um, make sure before you start the stir fry, because it typically goes fast if you're going to do different things that are um, going into the pan, um, then to have them all there by your side rather than running back and forth. Um, so foods that require the longest cooking time should be the first ingredients you start to cook and then you stir the food rapidly during cooking and don't overfill the pan, right? Because then crowding happens and then you end up steaming what's ever in that pan. Walks can get pretty hot though. Um, roasting, so basically you can add, yeah, you can add a rubber marinade and I would say roasting, you just stick it in the oven. That's like for me the simplest way of describing roasting. Yes, so, okay, so please, here's the YouTube video, please check that out. Um, it's really fun, I think, to learn how to make a jus. And m some of us have never done that, and um, and some of us, um, hopefully you will in your cooking classes. I try not to um, get too wordy or, or spend too much time on these because I think it's better for you to practice, and hopefully you are getting to practice in your in your classes but if not YouTube is a great resource I utilize it very often um, when I'm trying out different recipes so on this slide it talks about how to make a jus and really everything in these slides are really just suggestions and different ways that you can go about making vegetables or meats more flavorful but um, and most of these are are talking about like healthy that's why it says balanced um, menus at the beginning of this slide slideshow sorry so then there's um, smoking. So I've never done this. I've always wanted to do this. I like the taste of smoked food. So here are some other sauces that you can utilize and put on top of your finished product as well. We've talked about grilling. Broiling um, is um, hot, hot high heat from above. High heat from above, sorry. <laughs> so it's usually um, like a finish. I would say like a finishing step. I rarely ever like, I mean, some people might like reheat, reheat their food with, um, with broiling, but uh, I don't typically do that. That was only like right when I was gonna plate something that I would broil, but I don't, I don't utilize broiling very often. So now we're, so that was dry heat. Okay, great. So we went through all the dry heat cooking methods. Now we're getting into the moist heat cooking methods. So steaming and poaching. Um, so uh, steaming, you're, you can, it does say you can steam in the microwave, okay, yes. But um, there's usually little compartments that you can buy in the store um, for steaming where you're boiling the hot water and then this little compartment sits on top of the water and then the, the hot water rises through and that's steaming. Poaching is different. Poaching is around 165 to 170 degrees. I like to describe it as when you're when the water's in the pan and you just start to see little bubbles come up. Um, it's not it's not a simmer and it's not a boil, so it's lower than those. Simmering is a little bit higher on 185 and boiling's around 212. But the only way to know the difference is to see it. So I wish we were we could be together for that. Braising's one of my favorite um, cooking methods. Um, so you you, the way that I describe braising is you saute um, your your um, meat, your vegetables, and then you add um, liquid, so this is wine or stock, and you um, once you've already sauteed and caramelized everything that's going on in the pan, then you can add um, stock or wine, and then you can cover it, and so you got like you got the flavor from the sear, you got the flavor from the saute. And then when you're adding the water now, you're, or the liquid, sorry, you're cooking it now in that, in that liquid. So like if you want to um, sear chicken breast, and then you want to, and maybe vegetables too, and then you want to um, uh, deglaze your pan with uh, chicken stock, then you add the chicken stock and then you cover. And so then, yeah, so you still get that nice brown caramelized taste um, but it'll be, when it's all said and done, it'll be um, tender. It'll, it'll be cooked and it'll be tender. So, man, that's a hard one to explain too without, yeah, you guys got to check. If you haven't done it yourselves, definitely check out some videos. Fun times. One of my favorite cooking methods. 
so just everything that we've talked about this is really just different ways of building flavor um taking nutritious food and giving it a lot of yummy taste to it um so these are different these are more suggestions so i just recommend going through um when you're able um we don't get into a lot of baking um these are if you've already taken chef rudy's class if you've already taken the first baking class then you already know this but this slide just goes over what each ingredient in baking is utilized for so flour provides gluten and or protein which is a structure um bread flour has the most protein so it's the most stiff whereas cake flour has less gluten so it's softer um eggs Yes, they're high in protein. They also give structure and they contribute to flavor, color, and tenderness. Um, fat provides moisture and helps give baked goods their tender crumb. And then sugar provides sweetness and keeps baked goods moist and tender. So I think this YouTube video I include um, talks about how just like traditional baking and then like incorporating healthy um, items into your baking process. I am not a big fan, but I do it as like a conversation starter, so I wish we were together in class, but it's always fun to watch everyone's reaction, because um, when I bake, I just bake. Uh, if I'm going to have a pastry or a baked good, I go all out. Like, I've been eating healthy all week or all month or like, you know, majority of my time, so I'm not going to skimp when it comes to baking, but some of you might be like really hardcore healthy um, peeps, and so more power to you. So your baked goods might look a lot different than mine and be more nutritious and have a different flavor and different texture, but um, a dessert is a dessert, I suppose. Uh, few pure, ugh, fruit purees are also another option that you can utilize to substitute for some sugar and some fat in baking. So when it comes to healthy baking, you want to think about the balance and the ratio of all the different products. I try I t typically talk about baking as more of a science than cooking. I think cooking can be more trial and error versus I feel like baking is more of a science. Um, so if you're going to, that's what the, oh, here's the YouTube video where it talks about gluten-free vegan dessert. So for, um, as part of your group project, that is going to be something that you'll have to do is create a menu item that's gluten-free and vegan. So I would recommend checking out this YouTube video for a tip for how you would do that, how you would maybe make a dessert that's featured on your menu healthier. So that's an option. Okay, so tips for reducing um, fat and saturated fat. You can use oils instead of solid fat, so oils instead of butter. Um, and then <clears throat> oils can completely substitute for fats when creaming. Um, if you reduce the fat in a recipe, you need to increase other tenderizing ingredients um, or decrease ingredients that will toughen the product, such as switch to cake flour or use fewer eggs or do both. You can also substitute low in fat dairy products for regular dairy products. Um, these are some tips for reducing sugar. One of the things I think is like a great tip that I saw um, was uh, really utilizing like if you're going to make something that requires fresh fruit, like really allowing that fruit, fresh fruit to be as ripe as possible before you bake with it because it'll have more natural sugar in it anyways because it's ripened. Um, so th that's, a, that's an option so then you can use less sugar. And then here are just some little quick tips. Um, so for cake, uh, light cakes rely less on fat and more on sugar and liquids for a tender texture. Pie crust, make sure you coat the flour proteins with fat and don't overwork the dough. Cookies, um, don't use soft margarine, whipped butter, or diet margarines because they contain too much water. I have not even heard of diet margarine. That's that's fair. That's a interesting light cookies require precise measuring of the flour especially watch over carefully to get out of the right time and then with quick breads they're more versatile um, than baked goods in terms of making a variety of tasty healthful versions yes so this one this uh slideshow is more info driven and i hope the next couple of ones are a little bit more fun um so i tried to go through it not too quick but also not too slow because a lot of this should be review and a lot of this I'm reading verbatim from the slides and I really didn't want to torture you guys with that. So if there's anything I went through too fast or you have any questions, feel free to reach out and um, look through and read through these um, 
if you didn't buy the textbook, hopefully you did. But um, <clears throat> be sure to look through these slides for review. Alrighty, thank you so much. Until next time.